Okay, so yesterday, Sony deployed uh, beta tokens, beta codes to send out to PlayStation users to allow them to access a new beta firmware, which delivers new features. There's um, enhanced support for the DualSense Edge controller. But perhaps more interestingly is the delivery, in part, <laughs> of um, a new power efficiency mode, a low power mode for PlayStation 5 consoles. Now, here's the thing, right? Um, Sony is saying uh, that this is part of its uh, sort of net zero drive, uh, increased efficiency for uh, its consoles that are out there. Um, however, um, there seems to be a lot of controversy or speculation rather linking this to a potential Sony handheld, principally because of the nature of the cutbacks in place. Uh, we'll talk about those in a minute, but primarily um, they're running the GDDR6 memory at half speed, which effectively gives it the same kind of ballpark bandwidth being mooted for the next generation um, Sony handheld. And the reason that's quite important is because memory bandwidth and the limitation of it is actually uh, one of the primary limiting factors when it, do, when it comes to um, producing handhelds at the moment. Um, John, I'm interested in what you think about this. Um, it's certainly a curious state of affairs. It was leaked um, a couple of months back by Moore's Law is Dead. Everybody seemed to suggest at that point, commentary surrounding it, that it was something to do with the handheld initiative. Um, there's nothing about that, obviously, in Sony's disclosures, but I don't know what you make of this. I mean, realistically, whether a handheld actually came to fruition or not, and we don't know, uh, this could have been part of the research into that, right? Like, let's say the handheld doesn't happen, you know, they discover that, hey, if we do this sort of like throttling and scale back performance in the system, it actually save some power. Um, that's interesting enough. It is similar to what phones have been doing for a long time, right? Mm -hmm. Like you have an iPhone, for instance, you turn on battery save mode, it cuts the frame rate of the OS in half from 120 to 60 FPS, which I guess only applies to the pro models though, but still it's that same idea of like reducing performance to save on battery life, or in this case, it's more just reducing energy consumption. Um, but you're right. There's definitely elements to this that suggest that this is the sort of uh, development effort that could potentially be transformed into a portable lower spec mode for a, you know, an alternative handheld device of some sorts, which is interesting. But before we even get to that, I really am curious to see how this ends up playing out because the software titles, so this has actually been the big thing about a potential handheld. When scaling up performance, like for a PS5 Pro, it's easy for software to just sort of naturally take advantage of that because it expects X amount of resources, you're giving it more, right? So most software won't break when you do that. When you give it less though, I don't know, that's, that's kind of where things get dicey. And that was always kind of the thing we were wondering about if they're going to do like a lower spec PS5 hardware class kind of device, which we all kind of would agree that it's not feasible right now to actually match PS5 performance in a small handheld device. Laptop, yes, but like small handheld, no way. Uh, so if they're actually already implementing this in firmware, then it suggests that they've reached the point where they found a way to reduce the amount of resources available to software without it breaking. And yeah. I think that's, what's going to be most interesting. Mm. Um, I've actually sort of collated the leak from uh, Moore's Law is Dead that originated this story. There are details on what is actually cut back. I think the thing to point out, first of all, is that enabling the mode on its own doesn't actually do anything. You've actually got to have games um, that support the mode. So, which oh, means ah, so, yeah. so yeah. that's actually, so then that gets back to what I was just saying then. It's like, there is no, it doesn't seem like there's going to be an easy way to just make PS5 software compatible across the board, right? Yeah, developers have got to go in and produce uh, a yeah. new uh, mode that, that suits the, the cutbacks that the low power mode is instigating. And those uh, cutbacks, according to the original leak, are that, um, well, the CPU is limited to eight threads rather than the 16 that it's got. Um, so I guess that's SMT turned off. Um, that's the logical assumption. This one's curious. Reduce 3D audio processing power to 75%. Um, clock down GDDR6 memory to half speed, which is pretty 
pretty it's a swing swinging cuts there uh, reduce yeah. core uh, cpu gpu clocks by approximately 10 to 20 percent um limit the console to 36 compute units so i guess that's the ps5 pro because the pro uh, sorry the base unit already has 36 compute units so <laughs> if you run it on pro you're basically going to be running it in base ps5 mode with the low power profile attached and um, there's uh, no support for pro units for um, PSSR, and there's no support for VR either. Um, so, you know, on the face of it, the thing that sort of sticks out to me, uh, reducing the core clocks by approximately 10 to 20%, that kind of says to me that there's, um, obviously all PlayStation 5s are sort of tuned to a spe specific power level. I think they've just reduced the power level and uh, then that basically produces a natural reduction in GPU and CPU clocks. Uh, that kind of makes sense. And it also means that I, I suspect, you know, there was always very high frequencies, specifically on the GPU side for the PlayStation 5, which ran uh, a lot faster than the Xbox, for example. Um, so I guess that they're kind of moving from the max performance profile to the max efficiency level there defined by a power limit. That's kind of what I think there. Um, and yeah, basically the thing that really sticks out to me though is the um, half speed memory uh, because yeah. that you know, half speed, half memory bandwidth, that's going to be quite difficult for developers to contend with and will have a huge impact on GPU performance. Um, so yeah, interesting stuff. Alex, what do you think about this? Well, it's interesting if it does actually pan out that it requires explicit... Um developer uh modes to be made for it I, I presume it's kind of like the high performance 120 hertz option that is kind of nestled away secretly in the the playstation 5 settings that i think at launch was a little bit confusing to me because i was so used to the xbox interface i presume it's going to be in a similar place like it that is and yeah, then so that'll enable sort of the system mode in game yeah, because yeah. you can the, the the beta firmware that's out at the moment does actually have the option in the uh, in the menus there. You can actually see the option. It just doesn't do anything because there's no right. supported titles. Yeah, well, I think the explicit support is. I mean, John said it's probably a lot of compatibility, but also if this is actually a forward-looking option for the potential of a handheld, we do see already kind of the limitations of what that handheld will be if it requires mm. explicit support from this point onward um because you've got five years of backwards compatibility titles in there that unless they are updated explicitly i'm not sure what happens uh, to those games at all if they run on a theoretical handheld do they run they, do they, they run won't poorly run. i mean they're gonna <laughs> yeah. need that, that you know they run extremely slowly in the past i've basically matched um uh console settings to a PC version and run it on a handheld. And I think Plague Tale was doing like 15 frames per second yeah, on Z1 Extreme. That's not, not good. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting because there are going to be games that just don't tax the PlayStation 5 at all, really, if you think about it, you know. Um, and in those scenarios, I imagine the low power mode will just sort of just work once the developers added the profile for it. Um, however, it's going to be the games, you know, the, the sort of more AAA top end experiences that definitely will be impacted. And it's going to be interesting to see how developers adapt for that. Um, I just wonder whether the actual let's let's sort of remove all of the handheld speculation. It's a lot of effort for developers to go through for yes. an, an option where you're saying to the user base, hey, you've, you've spent X amount of money on your console, but you are going to deliberately hobble its performance <laughs> in, in the name of power efficiency. And you Because know, you also spent X amount of money on power, your energy bills each month. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, but, you know, let's, let's say <laughs> know, even if you're going from, like, you know, 200 watts to, to an extreme here, like 100 watts, it's still, you know, not going to make a huge impact it's on drop your power. Dropping the bucket, yep. yeah. Yeah, I mean, there have been some um, power efficiency drives from Microsoft, um, which we've talked about previously on the Direct. And one example that they've done, I mean, this doesn't require any sort of uh, input from um, the platform holder. Uh, Fortnite, for example, they just tweaked the um, menus because a lot of people were just leaving the game sitting idle on the menus and they just halved the frame rate on the menu after like two or three minutes or something like that. That saved a lot of power. They tweaked the dynamic resolution window of Fortnite because they, they just... 
uh, lowered the upper bounds because you couldn't really tell the difference. That saved like 10% of power. So there are actually ways to be power efficient without having you know, a, a platform holder enforce these pretty demanding um, uh, yeah. changes to the game. Right. So I do think there has to be some other agenda here. And there's only really two possibilities. Number one, which is extremely unlikely, is that um, Sony is going to produce like a, a, a hobbled version of the PlayStation 5. Just doesn't make sense. No. Um, the other thing being, well, actually, we've got this device coming up in the future. Um, we think it's got plenty of compute power, um, but memory bandwidth is going to be an issue. Here's, here's, you know, here's a, a good cover story for you start for you to start developing for it. <laughs> yeah, so you know it's certainly interesting. Um, I'm going to be interested to see what the further disclosures are that Sony is promising about it. Um, they're talking about you know what the impact is actually going to be to games, and I guess more of how they do it. Uh, some of which may validate these Moore's Law uh, is dead leaks. Um, got a couple of supporter questions. Um, this one from Minty Hippo. <laughs> Nice jolly username there. In lieu of the traditional quote-unquote slim model revisions that get cheaper and more efficient over time, would this lower PS5 mode benefit the rumoured PS5 handheld alongside a cost-reduced consoleized version of that same handheld? This would allow Sony to be produce a PlayStation 5 SE or something similar to get people in the PS4 and patch PS5 ecosystem at a lower cost if the PS6 will be more expensive. Maybe they, maybe they can fully adopt the PlayStation 5 amateur branding. <laughs> that would be oh, fantastic. Yes, time. <laughs> a Series S style device from Sony, which would just be, you know, you've got your PS5, you've got your Pro, and you've got your Amazon coming in at the low end. I think we've kind of covered that. I don't think there's uh, any kind of reason for Sony to produce a hobbled version of the console it's been putting out for five years. It just doesn't. No, no. <laughs> Stupid, yeah. Make any sense. The handheld side of things does make a lot more sense, however, and. Uh, Noted handheld experts like uh, Carey from the Forks have been talking about the challenges of memory bandwidth and um, the enhanced efficiencies that RDNA 5 is likely to bring, which kind of makes this low power mode a bit more of a target for uh, the, ha the potential handheld. Um, this one from uh, Cameron O'Neill. Do you think that with the introduction of the low power mode on PlayStation 5, we could get more resolution and graphical settings on a console? I'd love to get higher frame rates or better textures on a 1080p monitor. Well, that's an interesting thought, isn't it? To use the lower power mode with the full power of the system <laughs> kind of defeats the purpose of the um, <laughs> of, of the low power mode to begin with. But, you know, it would do that. Uh, but... I don't this, mean, Alex, it's not going to happen. That, that, that's, just give them options. Then just give them control options over res. Yeah. Like, that's so, that would be like, I don't know. That, that's so retroactive and backwards and dumb. <laughs> I mean, I get the idea. I get the idea. I'm very grateful for the question, but I feel like, nah, there's there's better ways to do that. Like Rich was talking about on a per title. Give them more options. You know, that's... Well, that's you bad. say that, but, you know, we could get more resolution and graphical settings on console and in the background as Oliver is editing this. And anti yeah. options, Oliver is <laughs> probably having a, a heart attack. Well, to to, uh, to 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 defend Oliver, I think Oliver likes options, but he doesn't like it when there's like six and they're yeah, all useless. I think that's a fair you know? point. Yeah. You know, and uh, that's the problem. Is a lot of titles that are I would describe as poorly optimized in the aspect of they don't actually have a good setting that you're comfortable with that achieves a certain goal or it's like the only one they have is like a 30 FPS mode that achieves that goal. Then you're in this like no man land of like extraneous settings that don't achieve much. Yeah, I think, I, I think that's, that. yeah. I think, I think all Oliver's sort of calling for is better curation of option modes, which actually deliver a meaningful outcome as opposed to, you know, hey, we're giving you lots of options, but you know, half of them are rubbish, don't use them. Mm -hmm. which is yeah. uh, our recommendation a lot of the time. But yeah, mm. Mm. <laughs> um, I don't really know what more to say about this, except to say that, um, well, I guess we're going to have to do some testing once these uh, once these low power mode games appear, because, you know, obviously we can track um, uh, power consumption from the wall with a PlayStation console, which is kind of where it matters at the end of the day. And we'll have to see what the cutbacks are. And then I guess we see from there, uh, the extent to which this could conceivably be a handheld. Yeah. Mm, I wonder uh, when all this stuff's going to kick in. I'm thinking about it, though, the, the at least on the PS5 Pro model, how it explicitly says 
PSR, PSSR wouldn't be enabled then at that point because it's kind of bringing it down. Right. Yeah. That would be an interesting thing in light of the the mobile version of this, whatever it is. Maybe it, then it means it's much more similar to the PS5 and doesn't have any machine learning capabilities. I think that uh, is an actual genuine power saving um, measure. Yeah. Um, I, I think that it would kind of be crazy not to launch a handheld with uh, machine learning features that you've invested yeah, a huge amount of time in, <laughs> especially when, you know, we, we've seen the impact of DLSS on Switch 2 being actually right. very, very good and uh, a, a benefit to, to a handheld system. So, yeah, I think it's simply, you know, maybe this sort of low power mode is sort of, you know, half of one, half the other, you know, it's kind of like a low power mode. That's its primary purpose. But in the background, it gives developers some ideas of the uh, constraints they're going to have to deal with. That kind of makes sense to me. Um, any final thoughts there, John? I mean, thank goodness for the Switch 2 and Series S, I guess. Developers already, you know, they're, they've already had to get used to targeting lower spec hardware at this level, so... Yeah, I uh, guess so. Makes, well, and PC. Know, especially the Switch too. And yeah, PC as well, though it could be argued that they don't always do such a great job there, but still. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, what do you think about that, Alex? Yeah, not, not all PC games scale as nicely as we would like downward uh, in this direction, so John's right. But, you know, more people are targeting Steam Deck like hardware, and we see that more explicitly in games these days, in spite of, of everything. So there's sometimes like a hardware profile for Steam Deck, but uh, yeah, I'd agree. It'd be nice ally. if it uh, or the wrong ally, and uh, yeah, it's, it'd be good to see more of that. And I guess even if there isn't a handheld in the end here, it's nice to see some more options there on the console. Like, but what if you want to plug this into your car, right? You want to run it in your car, right? PlayStation 5 in your car. Sip that juice. Yeah. <laughs> nice and slow. <laughs> bring, bring your PS5 on an airplane. Plug I it mean, in. think about it. The size already is prohibitive, though. You remember back in the day during the Pimp My Ride era, it was all about like put, putting a PS2 in your glove box and like mounting it to the, uh, the, the ceiling, uh, like a little CRT up there. Oh, like, those... you, don't, you don't see a lot of PS5s jammed into cars. That was I'm a afraid. thing. Um, <laughs> we're beyond that era, apparently. Wow. Uh, I had no idea there was a Pimp My Ride era as such. An oh. epoch, or even. Oh, you poor <laughs> sweet MTV child. thing. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, people do take their Series S's on planes, though, because you've got that little um, detachable screen that you can buy for it, True which that. is quite, quite interesting. 